Here we are as promised a video on painting a catkin. Uh, last week was the pussy willow and what I like about catkins is the way they hang and all the lovely pollen that comes off them. So this is the one I've done for an example and <clears throat> what I'd like to show you is to have your paper with a, um, a line drawn around it helps you with your composition and um, when you've finished you, you can be able to put a frame over it, a mount I mean. So I'm going to start drawing. Um, I'm drawing today with a Derwent watercolour, it's called Gunmetal and the number is 69. Um, I like to draw with a watercolour pencil because as you paint the colour blends into your painting so you're not doing too much rubbing out on your watercolour um, paper. So with the composition of this I quite like putting the branch at a slight angle to give some liveliness to the painting and I'm just going to start just above halfway and come down to just below halfway. So I'm just going to loosely sketch that in. I'm afraid the pencil drawing for a start off can be very um, subtle. Hopefully the camera will pick it up. So there, that's some, that's a start with your composition. Okay then, I'm going to do the bit where the bud's coming off. And it's nice to have it kind of growing upwards. And there's a little sepal there sticking out at the side that the um, catkin has kind of sprouted away from. And so I'm just going to put a nice flow of a line just very lightly to give you some direction for when you start <clears throat> doing the ink detail. As I say, I use a Parker Vector. Um, cartridge pen with quink ink and I'm going to start sketching in the the uh, branch loose sketches and drawing in the little twig that's sprouting from the main branch Once you've done your basic drawing in, when you start working with your pen, it is nice to free up a bit and play and um, just see what you might come up with. And with this example here, I don't know if you can see there, my mark making, started playing around with the shape a bit like um, Elizabeth I used to do on her signature. So I'm just kind of using this sort of a line just to play use your own creativity the pussy willow is slightly smaller at the bottom just some little flecks where you remember to put some yellow as though the blossoms um, coming off this bud okay there's the ink stage and now I'm going to use some wax crayons, Crayola crayons from the 24 pack as a resist with the watercolour. Okay, so I'm going to just, this is um, just the brown and the texture on the Bockingford paper. It's just catching the top and so when the watercolour goes on it will run in between and give like a two-tone effect. The next colour I'm going to use is it's a yellow green it says on the label and this is very useful for the bright greens you get in spring and sometimes there's a bit of a yellowy green on the bark as well, which adds a little bit a bit more interest to the twig. 
Notice I'm not colouring all the way in. This will be the light and then when the ink runs you'll have a darker shady bit there. It's getting to know your materials and how you can work them to work for you. So the next colour I'm going to use it's called Dandelion and just the yellow crayon in the pack. Now we've used this line here so I'm just going to use a very similar movement with the wax crayon for this. You're repeating what you've already done. Okay, then I'm going to go in with the paler yellow. I'm going to do some paler yellow on the top where the light will be catching the, um, the pollen. And I'm going to do some little bits those of you with hay fever will be thinking, oof, <laughs> all that pollen. Okay, what I'm going to do, because they are very delicate, these little areas on the flower, I'm going to do a stronger colour in the centre, and then as you paint the watercolour in, you'll get more of the character of the way the flowers go in and out in their little segments. The next stage is I'm using a number 12 Pro Art Polar White Nylon Brush. I've used lots of these and when the points wear off I still use them for mixing washes. They're a very good brush. So I'm just going to add a reservoir of water around the edge. So like with your wet in wet watercolour technique when the ink runs it will flow into the, um, it's like a moat of water and run in and you'll get a soft edge. So let's just play. Um, the ink is just running now and it's going in between the wax. <clears throat> As you can see it's going in the texture between the um, the wax that's on the rough paper. Look at that running beautifully. There we are. Fun time in the spring. At this stage you can leave it they do come up very delicate and subtle it will dry lighter and so now I'm just going to leave this to dry and then I'll be back with you soon okay I'm going to show you how to mix these lovely bright colors for the background so I'm using a quinacridone magenta here I do like to use really good strong quality colours because if you really want them very intense and bright they're great. If you don't want them so bright you can always knock them down by um, adding other colours whereas if you've got a colour that's not so bright you can't brighten it up. So I'm using ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta here. So I'm just doing a little test on the colours. There's my blue, that's the intensity that I'd like and that's the magenta. So I'm just going to mix a little. So I've got a nice purple there, I've got a little bit of magenta there and I think that's all I need to do for this. I'm going to leave it quite loose and for it to um, more or less paint itself I'd say. Okay, I'm just going to wet the background again. Uh, 
and I'm just going to lay in some of the colour mix. Lay in the purpley colour there. You can go straight over the wax, it will resist and then your colour will go into the textures left there. Okay, I'm just going to put a bit of a darker blue down the bottom. Notice how the yellow wax is breaking through as it's resisting the um, ultramarine. And up here it's beginning to develop itself. This is another reason why it's useful to have your lines drawn around. There's a little gap there, so I know I can bring the paint out past those lines. Okay, I'm just going to dip in the Quinacridone Magenta, just pure as it is, and drop a little in. Look at that, the red and green. going to go in with a, a damp brush just to encourage it to spread into that reservoir that I've left. Now this is a time when it does beautiful things for you but sometimes when it's not doing beautiful things you tend to think oh I want to go in and I want to change that. At this point I feel I would like this a deeper colour here and we could add a little bit of some burnt sienna if need be right, let's test the colour again while it's still very wet a bit too brown for my liking a bit more blue in there a bit more magenta yeah it's quite a nice dark as you can see some more of a purpley dark which is what i wanted just work that in with that wash there. Bring some across the, the branch just to darken the branch a little. There we go. So at this point I am going to let it um, dry for a while but I will be coming back and keeping my eye on it. Here's the original that I first showed you and here's rather a more dark background. 